So now let's go back up to the top here and uh, let's just keep things tidy and uh, collapse that code down. Let's do the same here. Okay, and let's do this here as well. All right, excellent. So now back up to the top, let's bring back all of the loads and fully replicate the um, the thing that we were trying to do, the, the analysis that we were trying to do from the very start, right? So that was um, our, our structure that was de described over in the uh, degree tutors tutorial. So we had a point load, we had a point moment, um, and we had a linearly distributed load, which is the load that we've just been working on. So now we should be able to run this code and it should calculate obviously our reactions, our shear force diagram, our bending moment diagram, which we can compare uh, with our tutorial article over on degree tutors. So let's run this from top to bottom now. Basically test our calculator on the right and we've got our shear forces and bending moments okay so it looks about right so let's compare it to our to our hand calculation essentially all right so here we are side by side we've got the output from our hand calculation over on the left here which is obviously the article over on degreetutors.com and we have our the output from our calculator over on the right so let's just compare right so we've got 67 for the reaction at a and of course our code our calculator is giving us 67 which is ideal 68 for reaction at b again great 68 over here that's good now let's look at our shear force diagram qualitatively looks absolutely correct i mean the 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 proportions, the inaccurate proportions of my sketch of the shear force diagram over on the left hand side are more obvious now because we've got a, a correctly scaled shear force diagram on the right. Let's just look at our values. We've got a 67. Let's hover over it. Yeah, we've got 67. We have a negative 23 uh, on immediately to the right of that point load. What have we got? A negative 23. Excellent. Coming down, curving down to a minus 59.1 down here. And we've got our minus 59.1. And what have we got? 8.6. Let me see, is 8.6? No, 8.9. That's more like it. 8.9 matches our shear force diagram. Excellent. So we know our shear force diagram is working at least. Moving on down to our bending moment diagram. Let's see what we've got. 201 for the peak. Uh, 200.997 or 977. Yeah, it's close enough to 201 for me. Um, and let me see. Qualitatively, it's it's perfect qualitatively it's fine we can see we've got a linear portion here we also have a linear portion here which corresponds to the constant magnitude shear here and of course as our shear force diagram starts to curve again our bending moment diagram being that one polynomial degree higher is also curving so we have a, a moment over the support of 61.8 and of course that agrees with 61.8 and then we had our point load over on the right hand side here of our point moment I should say of 50 and we've got 50 over here. Excellent, right, so that is a, a really nice validation of our calculator. Now, um, that's great, it took us a, a long, long time, well, a relatively long time to write all this code, but obviously, look, the beauty of this now is that we can go ahead and change all of the input parameters and instead of doing pages and pages of hand calculations, which I'll emphasize, you do still need to know how to do. I mean, you can only do the thing on the right. You can only build this calculator if you know how to do the thing on the left, which is do the hand calculations. Um, but now that you understand the hand calculations, you've built yourself a calculator, now we can go ahead and just change the parameters uh, to whatever we like um, and uh, just run our calculator. So let's just do that then. So if you scroll on down in this um, this guide over here on degree tutors where I'm explaining shear forces and bending moments and all that good stuff, you have another example at the end here. So let's just uh, take that example, plug it into our calculator and uh, make sure that we get the uh, the right answers or see what it gives us. So scroll on back up to the top. This is how quick this is gonna to be to use this calculator, right? So the first thing we want is our span. What's our span? So we've got five and five and five, so the span is 15. We can update our span here. Uh, now we have no overhang on the left, and so A is gonna be zero. We've no overhang on the right, so it's a nice, simply supported beam. Uh, and so our B dimension is gonna be the same as our span, so we make that 15. We've got one point load coming onto this beam, and it is a negative 40 this time. Just leave that negative in there. So it's going to be 40. Its position is at 12 meters. 
Okay, that's fine. And now we don't have any linearly varying distributed loads. We have no point moments, but we do have some uniformly distributed loads to take into account. So let's start uh, implementing or inputting those. So the first one is this five kilonewtons per meter that goes from zero to five meters. So its starting point is zero, its ending point is five, and it's got a magnitude of um, five, but acting in the negative y direction. Now we've got to put in a second one, which is going to be this 20 kilonewtons per meter. So in order to add a second distributed load, we'll just put a comma in here, a new set of square brackets, we we'll go to a new line just because it looks nicer. And then we'll start with the next guy. So the next guy starts at five. He goes up to 10 and he's got a magnitude of 20 in the negative y direction. Excellent. And we've got one more to put in. So we go to a new line, give ourselves a set of square brackets. This one starts at 10, goes to 15 and has a magnitude of a negative 3. Okay, excellent. So now we only have our point load. Make sure everything's correct here. That looks good. We don't have any point moments commented out. Uh, we've got our three distributed loads. They all look good. And we've got no linearly distributed loads. Everything else can stay the same. So this is the, this is the workings of this calculator. All you ever have to do is change what you're putting in here. So let's run this and see what we get. Now, do I actually show the shear moment diagram? I don't. But it basically, if you'll see it in part two of this video here, uh, you'll see the shear moment diagram. So let's uh, run our code. All right, so we've got some reactions and we've got a shear force and we've got a bending moment diagram. Now, I know that that's the correct shear force and bending moment diagram, but to confirm it for yourself, you can basically, well, I mean, you can see it in the thumbnail of this video here, actually. You can see at least qualitatively the shape of the shear force diagram is matching up quite well. And if you actually go into that video, and I'd actually recommend that, not necessarily watch the video, but work through this uh, analysis by hand and you'll confirm that your shear force diagram is correct, giving you all the correct values. And of course, your bending moment diagram is also correct. And, you know, if you understand what we've been talking about in this article over here on the left hand side, you'll be able to look at this shear force diagram and you'll see the uh, you'll be able to essentially relate what's happening in the shear force diagram to what's happening in the bending moment diagram. And it will all make sense to you. For example, we've got a zero shear here. If I hover over, it's zero at about 7.8 meters, which means I should have a maximum at about 7.8 meters, which sure enough is what I get. So you should always be looking for those kind of uh, validations, those little things that you expect to be true. Make sure they're true uh, in the output of your calculator. All right, so there you have it. You have, a, you have a shear force and bending moment diagram calculator in your Jupyter notebook that you can now deploy whenever you like. So provided you understand all of the theory on how to get there, you don't have to keep doing it every single time now. If you've got a, a, simple, a simple beam to analyze to get a shear force bending moment diagram, just plug it into your calculator and you're away. So the next question is, you know, what do you do now? Where to next? What's the, the next thing you should think about doing? Well, if you followed all the way through this series up to this point and you've implemented this, you've got this calculator, I'd suggest the next thing to do is take your code and expand it and start implementing the ability to take into account rotational pins within your structure. So if you've taken or if you've worked through my course, on the shear force and bending moment diagrams. Where is it? All the way up to the top here. If you've gone through this particular course, you'll see that we start off looking at simply supported beams. Then we introduce rotational pins within our beams. Um, and we you know, work out the shear force and bending moment diagram for those structures. And then we move on to frames, statically determinate frames. So I'd say for you, a great next step would be take this calculator and implement the ability for it to take into account a rotational hinge at some point along your beam. So that's a nice little task uh, that uh, will, uh, well, it'll be a good little addition to your calculator. Right, so that's enough. Uh, we'll leave it there and uh, I'll see you in the next one.